Hey everybody, welcome to our first video on the human memory system. We're going to take a look at some of the basic terminology in this video. So again, be ready to rewind and use your notes. Follow along in your textbook and we will discuss these concepts tomorrow. So let's take a look at the information processing model. We're going to primarily use the three-stage model of memory uh, created by Atkinson and Schifrin. This is a pretty simple memory model. Remember, our actual memory system is way more complicated than this model suggests. But this model allows for basic understanding of the stages and processes of memory and also helps us promote research. Uh, the three stages of the information processing model it includes the sensory memory, not common knowledge to most people. This is a filtering system of all incoming sensory information into our brain. And we have the short-term uh, memory system, which many people have heard about. Um, information that we pay attention to that's coming into our sensory memory gets passed on to the short-term memory. Um, for 20 to 30 seconds uh, in order to be um, conceptualized, judged, and evaluated. And if the information is important enough, it may get passed on to the long-term memory. We'll talk about each of those fairly um, soon. So if we look at memory as information processing, there's really three important processes that we need to discuss at length uh, when we talk about memory. The first process refers to encoding, and that's getting information into our memory system. And that typically involves getting information from our short-term memory, which is initial evaluation and processing, into our long-term memory for relatively permanent storage. This can be effortful or automatic. Um, storage is the process of retaining information and experiences, and that typically refers to how we keep information in our long-term memory for later use. And then retrieval is also an important part of the memory system. Getting information from the long-term memory back into the short-term working memory so we can consciously think about and um, talk about and use information. Now the sensory memory is an initial filtering of all incoming information from the outside world, things we see and taste and smell and touch and hear. Um, it is very fleeting memory. It is a perfect, um, picturesque for visual um, information, photographic memory of incoming sensory information, if you will. But it has a very short duration. That's why it is fleeting. Fleeting means very short in duration. Fleeting visual information is referred to as iconic memory. It is a photographic memory of everything in our visual field, but it lasts less than one second. And only filter information gets through our filtering if we pay attention to it. So if we pay attention to any stimulus in our visual or sensory field, it gets passed on the short-term memory. So if you want to learn something, you want to remember something, you have to pay attention to it. Information that is not attended to is quickly forgotten, especially visual information. George Sperling in the late 19th century kind of proved that our sensory memory exists. He used a machine called a tachistoscope, which is kind of a turbocharged slide projector, and quickly flashed uh, a series of letters on a screen for less than a second about a 20th of a second, and then asked subjects to um, retrieve the information by writing the letters down. And most people, they'd get three, four, five letters down, and then the information was lost. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Information that we do pay attention to that gets through our sensory memory system, gets into our short-term memory system. So sensory memory system, um, up here, information coming in is paid attention to, and it gets into this temporary storage just long enough for us to decide whether it's important to us, um, it's relative to us, or something we need to know. 
Um, information from the short-term memory, we have a very limited capacity, about seven items. And the duration is about 20 to 30 seconds unless we chunk it, which means we somehow mentally group information together. We can keep more of it in there. Instead of seven, we might be able to keep 10, 15, 20 items in there if we group things together in a meaningful way. And if we rehearse information, consciously practice or repeat information, we can keep it in there indefinitely. Our working memory is part of our short-term memory. It's kind of a newer addition to the atkinson schifrin model, Baddeley and Hitch, 1976. And basically what they said was the short-term memory is really several systems that actively processes information coming in through our sensory memory and combines it with information that we retrieve from our long-term memory. So we have sensory input. That input is then um, coordinated uh, with our central executive system. This is our conscious um, inner voice. Um, we have an inner visual system that processes visual information. And we have an inner voice, that voice that talks to us, um, that um, questions us and helps us make decisions. Um, that information is combined in our conscious awareness. So everything you're thinking about Deciding, um, problem solving, evaluation is all based on the central executive and the information coming in that we paid attention to um, and where we direct our attention and gathering information from our long-term memory to help make decisions. So it's really a working system. It is the CEO of you. So every time you're thinking, you're making decisions, it happens in that working memory system. Now our long-term memory is a relatively permanent and relatively limitless memory storehouse. There's two different types of long-term memory. We'll talk about that later. And there's many different brain areas active uh, when we are retrieving and storing long-term memory, including our hippocampus and our cerebellum. Those are two terms you'll have to know very well. Um, and if we have the right prompts and the right clues, we can retrieve information from our long-term memory into our short-term working memory and help us make decisions and um, judges, judgments. So that's it really for long-term memory. Um, we will revisit all these parts a little bit later. Uh, make sure you understand the terminology of duration and capacity and sensory, short-term and long-term memory. And we'll talk tomorrow. Thanks.